protection of civilians remains the overarching priority for United Nations mission in South Sudan in furtherance of implementation of the mandate. In pursuance of the whole of mission strategy of UNMIS, the force conducts its uh, protection of civilian operations in close cooperation with the police and substantive sections of the mission and in partnership with international partners, humanitarian actors, with the UN country team, with the communities we serve and the host government and its army and police. It includes pre-planned -de -pre deployment at certain areas which are identified as conflict prone and dynamic deployment of temporary operating bases and long and short duration patrols in locations where early warning is received of imminent conflicts. It includes deployment of quick reaction forces, teams for defense of identified protection of civilians camps and internally displaced personnel camps and sites in the country. It includes active patrolling of our area of uh, responsibility in order to show presence, to inspire confidence and to develop and promote a sense of security amongst the population. Wherein we do not have requisite early warning and clashes take place, we also react through strong patrols and a strong reaction to these conflicts and clashes that take place, adopting all or either of the options that I will talk about now based on the situation and available resources. Very often, this is a decision dilemma for the commanders on ground to adopt some, all, or maybe one of the options depending on the situation and this resources available. We constantly train our ground commanders to take this decision most efficiently by keeping the fundamental principle in their minds, which is select the option that gives the opportunity to protect maximum civilians. impact of how our conflict prevention methods have worked is very difficult to assess. It's an intangible aspect and it's difficult to measure or perceive. However, it is this very impact that we constantly strive to strengthen. For example, during the conflict in between September and November 2022 in Upper Nile State, we took the option of protecting the village of Kodok, which we thought is the next logical objective that the attackers would uh, attack and which is where maximum civilians would congregate. And we uh, reinforced that location. We uh, guided the fleeing civilians from the zone of conflict in the neighborhood, got them to flock to uh, gather at Kodok and protected them. And thereby we prevented the attack on Kodok, I would like to think, and also uh, protected the lives of over 18,200 IDPs who had gathered near our base. In the case of a clash that broke out in Malakal POC camp very recently in the month of June, where our effort was to drive a wedge between the clashing communities, where our QRT interposed itself between the two warring uh, communities and contained the conflict and contained the casualties. There, our protection of civilian actions takes the hue of uh, building a 25 kilometer dike system of 6 meters to 9 meters, 6 feet to 9 feet, and continuously monitoring it and preventing uh, threat to life from any uh, accidental floods. On 8th and 9th of October 2022, a breach was discovered by one of our patrols, a breach of 21 meters by 9 meters from where the water was entering into the IDP site in great force 
such that even heavy engineering equipment could not reach the breach. But all unmissed personnel there, military and civilian, as well as the communities there, stood together in a human chain, ensured they we reached the breach and fill sandbags and close the breach in an action that I suppose would have saved at least 40,000 uh, infirm, old and uh, mobility impaired, internally displaced personnel in the camp.